Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Wednesday, August 8th, 2012. Let's jump right into the charts here. We'll start off with the usual S&P 500 E-mini futures. This morning, futures are trading down a little bit, around five and a quarter points. Um, not a huge move down by any stretch, but nonetheless, trading around 1391.50. 13.9175. Uh, futures are trading lower after um, the dollar is catching a bid. And as you know, the dollar has sold off sharply really ever since um, probably uh, the 24th of, of July. The dollar has really fallen off a cliff. And when the dollar moves down, the market moves higher and vice versa. So today the dollar is catching a little bit of a bid. You can see the U.S. dollar index trading uh, back above the 82.50 level. Yesterday it came very close to the $82 even number. Um, today you're getting a little bit of a bounce. The dollar moves higher, markets move down. That's the bottom line. What's causing the dollar to move higher? It's basically Europe once again. Um, <clears throat> if you take a look at some of the news coming out of Europe today, it looks like uh, German industrial production declined. Uh, also, you had um, you also have some uh, other problems brewing possibly in Germany with factory orders that are starting to slow. So we'll just see how it all plays out there. But um, once again, problems coming out of the European Union. If you take a look at the European markets this morning, uh, for the most part, <clears throat> they're they're down a little bit. They're not all down that much. But uh, you do have Italy and Spain both trading down over one percent. In fact, um, Spain is trading down about 1.85%, which is a pretty big decline today. So um, once uh, the problems start to brew again there, you'll see these markets come under some stress. And that looks like what's happening today. Uh, also, if you take a look at the European uh, euro currency, which is right here, you're going to see that the euro is starting to sell off again after uh, making some pretty solid gains over the past three sessions. Today is a big, big decline. Uh, the euro trading right around uh, 1.233, uh, definitely a, a pretty good fall there. And that's all based on the dollar moving higher. Problems in Europe are, are once again uh, coming into the uh, marketplace. So again, this isn't over by a long shot. I know the rally has been pretty decent the few, past few days, although the market's moved up on really no volume. Uh, but nonetheless, point-wise, it has been pretty robust. We'll see if today comes to a, a little bit of an end. Not really sure. If the dollar starts to pull back, um, the euro will get a bid. Also, the futures will also trade off the lows. So, once again, just keep an eye on the dollar. That will tell you everything you need to know. Let's take a look at oil and gold. Um, generally, when the dollar is up, oil and gold are lower. That is the case this morning. Gold is down $6 to $16.07 per ounce. Take a look at the GLD. <coughs> You'll see the GLD, which is a proxy for gold, uh, trading around 155.61. It closed yesterday at 156.28. So uh, gold is moving a little bit lower, signaling potential deflation in the marketplace. Let's take a look at uh, oil today, light sweet crude, which is what we use here in the United States, uh, trading down 42 cents to $93 and a quarter per barrel. Uh, today, the USO, which is a proxy for light sweet crude, You'll see here is trading down to 74.79, um, getting a little down tick. Closed yesterday at 74.91, so a little down tick in oil uh, this morning uh, on the back of a stronger dollar, and that should remain the case if the dollar moves higher. If the dollar starts to fade, look for oil, look for gold, look for equities, all to catch a bid uh, higher as as deflation uh, creeps out and inflation creeps in. That's really what it comes down to. All right, let's take a look at some stocks out there today. Um, looks like the first one we got to look at is Priceline. Uh, PCLN is the ticker. This is a market leader as well. Stock is just getting demolished. Uh, closed yesterday around the 680 level. Today it's trading at 575, down over 100 points. Um, I worked out some calculations on this. I don't think there's anything to do here until the stock gets to around um, the 552 level and then maybe even 542. So watch those two levels, 552, maybe it's 542, and after that it's going to be 504, and then it will be all the way back down to around 411. I know I worked these levels out in a long distance uh, manner, but nonetheless, watch the 552 level, then 542, and then 504. Those are your support levels. This is a strong gap down, 
and it's pretty obvious here by the, the fall that this thing has had today. Um, but nonetheless, there's really not a lot you could do with it at this stage of the game. Let it go lower, it very well may. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Zillow. I did see this had earnings today. It's all over the map. There's not a lot you could do here. Closed at um, $41.76. It's really just all over the map. There's good support at $33.75. $33 and then there's more support, I believe, at um, <clears throat> $30 even number. So watch for 30 bucks. So those are your support levels there for Zillow. Let's take a look at Disney, everybody's favorite uh, TV station ESPN and also Disney World uh, theme parks. This one right now trading at 49.20, closed at 49.80. Just a down tick. A lot of support around 46.95. So watch for Disney. A lot of support at 46.95. After that, it's 45 dollars. After that, it's 42 bucks. But Disney right now is still very good support at 46.95. Then 45 dollars. Then 42. All could be small bounce areas. Uh, always depending on the market, obviously, and the way it comes into those levels. But uh, that is support levels right now. Let's take a look at Rio Tinto. This is one of the largest um, mining stocks out there. They mine for everything iron, uh, copper, you name it, they mine it, nickel, everything. Um, the company had earnings trading up around $50.20. I would not touch it here. Um, there's a ton of resistance uh, everywhere. The stock's overbought at this moment. I would not touch it. Uh, leave it alone. There's not a lot you want to do with this one. Uh, let's find some levels here. Uh, I'm thinking right off the bat, um, right where it is, it, there's a lot of resistance. Uh, then you have to look probably <clears throat> around the $52 level. That's, that's another spot right there. And let me just get the next level here. Make sure these calculations are correct. Yeah, you'd look right around 52, maybe 52.40. After that, it would be 54 dollars, and then 54.97, make it 55 bucks. So those would be your resistance levels. But I'm not sure it's even going to go up from here. I think already um, it, it could be a little bit overcooked already. But um, due to the market's nature recently, you want to be a little bit ca cautious. These gap ups have been holding up as of late. Let's take a look at Dish Network. <clears throat> Stock closed yesterday at thirty dollars and um, I believe sixty-seven cents. Today it's trading at thirty fifty-two. Not a big deal there. Um, I don't see a lot of upside in this one. So if it does move higher, watch the thirty-one fifty level. Um, pretty good resistance there, and then more resistance around. Um, I guess around thirty-two seventy-five. But either way, uh, on this one. Um, I don't really see a lot of upside potential. Like I said, um, earnings came out. I'm not sure how it's going to play out. But you have a lot of resistance up here around this uh, 31 and a quarter, 31.50 level. After that, it's $32. And then uh, ultimately, um, around the 33, 33 and a quarter area, much, much more resistance. I, I don't know if this one has a lot left in it. So um, be a little bit careful there. Let's take a look at Dean Foods. Um, they came out with some, they're going to do a spinoff. Also, there's some other news on Dean Foods. I, you have to check it out for yourself. I would not be a buyer here. It's overbought, overextended. It's a strong gap up. This means the gap looks real to me. It doesn't look like it's going to be uh, a big fade um, by any stretch. <clears throat> the only thing is that the stock is at very, very good resistance points here. It also has a lot of resistance at double top on the daily chart which is around 1725 but even here where it is right now I would not be a buyer it looks overdone it's too far extended um, may need to pull back in but it's a very good move for Dean Foods today um, strong gap up but um, do not chase it here if you own it you know I'd start to trail the stop loss or, or try to lock in some gains at these levels uh, let's take a look at McDonald's <clears throat> McDonald's is getting hit today uh, stock closed at 89.01 yesterday. I think they reported earnings today. Stock's trading at 86 bucks. There's support right at 86. So there is support at 86 dollars. If this level breaks, though, this level breaks on a closing basis. 86 does not hold because that is the most recent double bottom from June. That level fails to hold. Stock's going to 80 bucks. That's where you could look at it the next time for a bounce. 
I don't really see much in between there. There's some small support levels, but to be safe, 80 bucks is going to be the next support level for McDonald's. This stock has really fallen from grace, uh, considering it was uh, basically a hundred dollar stock in in the beginning of the year. So McDonald's um, has come down pretty sharply um, from that from that high. But watch 80 bucks if this 86 level does not hold. But the stock does have support right at 86, and you can see it tried to bounce already. Now it's coming back down, maybe retest that level. It can break. It can break. So um, it's a fairly strong gap down. It's not the strongest I've ever seen. So 86 will be a little bit of support. But after this, it's $80 um, as the support level. And that's what you're going to want to watch for. Um, there's some other stocks out there. There's a lot of retail stocks um, coming out with news. Um, so you want to see how that plays out. But this is what I'm looking at today. I'm just trying to keep with the liquid names and... Um, We'll see what we get once the market opens. But futures, again, are down about five points at the moment as the dollar has caught a bid. But watch the dollar. If the dollar reverses course, starts to trade lower, remember the futures will move higher. So will the euro. With that said, everybody, have a great trading day, and we'll see you on the charts tomorrow. Take care now.